Hi there everybody, what's up? My name is Magnus and you're watching Coding TensorFlow, the show where you learn how to code in TensorFlow. All right, this is the second episode where we explore overfitting and underfitting. If you haven't already, you need to check out the first episode. See the link below. Don't worry, I'll wait for you here. Okay, so we left off episode one looking at the multi-hot encoding of our input string using the sentence, the small cat. As you can see, we put a one hot encoding at the array indexes for each word present and zero at all other indexes. Let's now look at three different models we will use to demonstrate overfitting. There will be a baseline model, a very small model, and then a bigger model. Our baseline model will consist of three dense layers. The first two with 16 neurons and ReLU. And then our classification layer using Sigmoid. Our small model will be just a fraction of our baseline model with just four neurons instead of 16. And our bigger model will be very similar in structure, but have 512 neurons for the first and second layers. Okay. Time to bring out the code. You can locate it here. Now, let's train and test these models. First, we define the baseline model. Then we train it. And here, we define the small model and train it. And finally, we define the bigger model and train it. All right, now for the interesting part, comparing how these models perform. As you can see, the training loss for baseline and bigger quickly decreases, while it takes much longer for the small model. For our discussion on overfitting though, what's more interesting is the validation of the models on the test data set. Here, you can clearly see that the loss quickly increases the more features our models have. This is a clear example of overfitting. The trade-off here is that the more neurons our model has, the risk for memorization on the test data increases, and our model will not work well during validation. This is called overfitting. But at the same time, if we have too few neurons, our model may not be expressive enough to solve the problems. This is called underfitting. So what can we do about this? Well, there are two ways to approach this problem. The first one is called regularization. You can read a detailed explanation of that here. What it really boils down to, though, is to force the weights of our model to be as small as possible. This disables our model to learn specialized things about our training data. Doing this is very straightforward in TensorFlow. Simply use the kernel underscore regularizer parameter when defining the model. Let's train our baseline model using these parameters. As you can see, our L2 model, which is regularized, validates much better on the test data set than our previous baseline model. A second way to deal with overfitting is to use something called dropout. Dropout simply means that we set a layer's feature with probability to a zero. So in this example, we're adding a dropout probability of 50% to our layers when we train our model. And as you can see again, this improves the overfitting problem. If you want more information about overfitting and underfitting, you should watch the generalization video from the machine learning crash course. The link is in the description. And that's it for this two episode series. I hope you had fun watching and please subscribe to this channel below for seeing more videos like this. But now it's your turn to go out there and create some great models! Don't forget to tell us all about it.